All right, everyone. Welcome to Chapter 9, Emergency or Incident Response. Um, this is a very short chapter. It's only like 10 slides, but it's definitely some important stuff that we need to uh, cover. So without further ado, we're going to dive in. And also, I included this picture on the front slide. Uh, it's some first responders. It looks like this was uh, the World Trade Centers. You can see their PPE. You can see how they responded. They're wearing bright colors. They're wearing uh, helmets, respirators. So, you know, it was uh, something that, you know, I, I wanted us to remind us about some first responders. All right, let's dive in. So emergency response planning. Emergencies are rare. However, they do happen and we need to prepare for them. Uh, you need to have plans. You need to have plans built out. People need to be trained in those plans and people need to know what to do in, in the case of an emergency. Pesticide spills can result in large losses due to cleanup, liability, claims, and fines. You know, you could be fined by the city, the township. You could be fined by the EPA. You could be fined by the local Michigan Department of Agriculture. I'm sorry, not Michigan. That's me. But the Department of Agriculture, um, you know, there's the cleanup. So you got to have your insurances in order. You know, realistically, you don't want a spill. So do whatever you can to stop spills. But then also protect yourself if a spill were to occur. Okay, so emergency response plan. Creating your emergency response plan, you need to designate a go-to person. Who's the go-to person that's going to um, coordinate everything, right? Who, who's the go-to guy in an emergency that people run to and he knows what to do? You got to select that person. He's a, he's a person that can deal with stress and do well under stress. Um, you also want to post names of the response agencies so people know who to contact. Create a form that outlines the critical information for emergency personnel. You also want to create a facility map which tells you you know, where stuff is in the facility so that way first responders can know. I would also add that you want to create um, truck maps so that way you know where everything is in the truck. Ideally, you want all of your trucks to be the same and everything in the same spot. That is the ultimate goal. That's not always the case, especially when you're starting out and you have a new business. You might have a couple of trucks that are different. One might be a single cab. One might be a crew cab and things are laid out differently. But you definitely want truck maps as well. So that way you know where everything is. And somebody could just jump in and they look at the truck map and they know where everything is too. You also want to keep an accurate inventory. Know how much you have. What do you have? That's important for first responders and regu regulatory agencies. Um, have copies of labels and SDS sheets away from the storage area. So like we keep ours in our truck. So I highly doubt that our storage area is going to burn down. But if it did, we would have labels in our vehicles. And then you also, like I said, you want to train your employees in the emergency response. You want to practice it. You know, if you just have a plan, but you've never, you know, ran through it, then nobody, nobody's prepared. Nobody knows what to do. You know, in the arborist world, people do, you know, aerial rescue training. And it's because it's not that, you know, they... They don't know how to rescue somebody, but in a situation, you need to understand what to do. And so you go through the motions and you do it, and that's how you learn it. So what happens in fires? Okay, pesticides can vary in flammability. Pesticides can also be very harmful to firefighters and first responders. And so that's why that inventory is important. That's why knowing what you have is important, why having those SDS sheets and labels is important so that way you can protect those guys just in case. Um, some precautions to take to reduce fire hazards would be to store combustible materials away from heat sources, install fire detection systems, smoke alarms at the bare minimum, um, have fire extinguishers readily available, and train employees on how to use them. And you also want to make sure, you know, what fire extinguishers do you have? Some are rated for certain types of products and some are not. You know, do you have oil-based products? Are they water-based? I mean, what, what are they, right? You need to know. In case of a fire, have a designated area to meet, right? Where does everybody go in the facility? You know, back in school, we would do that, right? Tornado drills, fire drills. We would go outside, we'd line up, and it's no different, right? We were just doing drills. This is drills for your company. So we need to have these things. 
But in case of a fire, have that designated meeting area, call the fire department, provide the firefighters with the SDS sheets and the labels so that way they can have it, they know what to do, contain the runoff when it's safe to do so, call your insurance agent and make the necessary phone calls to the regulatory agencies. You know, this is unlikely something that you're going to sweep under the rug. Um, you might as well face it and say, hey, this is an accident. You know, here's my insurance. I contacted the agent. We did this X, Y, Z to prevent this and stop this. This was our site map. This was our plan. Like we we did everything we could. This was just a crazy thing that happened. And more than likely, they're going to, you know, be like, okay, well, you did what you could. And now we just got to clean everything up. What happens in case of pesticide spills? So pesticide spill is an accidental release of any amount of chemical, small or large. It can have potentially major consequences, though, to public health, to the environment, and financially. Um, you know, public health, if you spill something, right now off the top of my head, I think of the train derailment in Ohio that happened not that long ago. Um, and, you know, what happened there? They just let the chemicals burn because they said that was going to be safer. But, you know, the public health and the environment there, you know, that's going to take a long time for them to assess if it's safe or if, or what happened to the environment. And the financial aspect of having to clean that up, I mean, that's a huge, huge chemical spill to clean up. But that's just, you know, a large uh, example of what can happen. But there's the three C's of a pesticide spill. There's control, contain, and clean up. So the first thing is you want to control the spill. You want to stop it, right? Control the spill. Stop whatever's causing the spill. If a container is leaking, try and find another container to pour the contents in that's safe to do so, so you can stop the leaking. If your hose has a leak, turn off your system. Um, patch your hose. Do whatever you have to do to stop that. And then you want to contain it. So what did spill? How do you contain it? You throw up your dikes. You throw down your absorbent material to clean it up, and then you clean it up, right? And that's the next part. So controlling the spill, what do you do? You take immediate action. You make sure that you wear your proper PPE. Uh, if a small leaking, I just kind of said this, I skipped a slide. I already knew it, I guess. But if there's a small leaking container, move it to a larger one to catch the leak. If a larger container is leaking, attempt to plug the leak, right? So not a bad idea to keep some duct tape or... I guess flex seal tape. I don't know if that would work, but that's an option, right? As far as a temporary fix. Um, transfer contents into another container if you can. If a leak occurs in a pressurized system, turn off the pump. Pretty simple. And then try and patch that leak. And never leave a spill unattended. Because if you leave a spill unattended, what can happen? You might have passers-by that say, oh, what's this? Or a little kid goes, walks around, starts playing in a bunch of pesticides now you're probably talking about a lawsuit and you do not want that to occur. So you never leave it un unattended. And additionally to containing the spill, you do not want to allow the spill to enter surface water. You want to carry a shovel, which can be used to make a quick berm to do whatever you can to prevent it from going into water. Um, surface contamination is much easier to clean up than in bodies of water a lot less expensive. More than likely, you can just dig down a couple of inches and remove that soil and replace it with good soil, and you'll be good to go. Um, if contamination occurs to a body of water, contact a regulatory agency responsible. You got to own it. You have to. It's the best thing that you can do for yourself and for the environment and for the people that live there. Uh, call 911 to report the spill. Utilize absorbent tubes, dikes, in your spill kit. Cleaning up the spill, uh, sweep up absorbent material. If the spill occurs on concrete or asphalt, you will need to neutralize the surface, follow the safety data sheet and any sort of label uh, recommendations. The regulatory agency will tell you what to do if a spill occurs on soil. An example would be to remove the top two to three inches of soil and replace with clean, uncontaminated soil. Um, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty common if that were to occur, right? Just dig up what could have been possibly in, uh, exposed to that and then replace it. And more than likely, the clients will also say, yeah, that's good enough. Um, keep records of your activities, conversations with regulatory agencies, first responders, and media. Photo and video documentation helps. It helps you. It protects you. Same thing with these conversations. 
having a phone conversation is one thing, but you really want stuff in writing. You want emails, uh, formal letters, things like that. There's obviously going to be times where you have to make a phone call if this time ever, if this ever does occur, but you want to protect yourself. And so you want to have conversations in writing to look back on. Preventing spills. Well, take the necessary precautions when mixing, loading, transporting, applying, uh, regularly inspect your equipment, your containers, your hoses, drive safe, drive defensively, you know, reduce the risk of an accident and a spill, keep an adequate spill kit in your truck and at the storage facility and items to keep in case of a spill. Of course, your spill kit, the regulatory agency numbers, you want PPE available to you, a shovel, broom, and a dustpan, and detergent for cleaning up. 